the Opie and Anthony Show continues. continues. This is After ONA Live. Here's your host, Sam Roberts. It's After Opie and Anthony Live. I'm Sam Roberts. Opie and Anthony, well, they stayed here till about 10.05. So to say that they left in a hurry would be an understatement. But the rest of us are still here. D-Boy's back today. Danny's here. Travis, E-Rock, Troy, everybody. We're all hanging out. We keep the channel live because why not? It's something nice for you. It's something nice for us. It's pizza party day. So we're all very excited here as the studio is getting cleaned up. Uh, one of the Ron and Fez interns is in here right now trying to set up the Ron and Fez stuff. They're coming up after O&A Live. But we, after, after Opie and Anthony Live. But we still have a lot of stuff to cover today. Um, of course it is. We'll get into the pizza party stuff in a little bit here on the show, but, uh, I mean, everybody who works here is talking about this pizza party, but first, something came up in the beginning of the show today, uh, about the guys, uh, the unpredictability of every day being gone from the show since they got to Sirius, and Opie and Anthony, or the Sirius building, Opie and Anthony started talking about, what, did you drop something over there, Gabe, what happened? Yes, I, I dropped the Pal Talk headphones. Well, Ron's not going to be happy about that, is he? No, I will probably get a cowbell thrown at me. That's Ron and Fez intern Gabe. Every, you dropped something else. <laughs> I'm a mess today, Sam. Well, don't worry about it. Um, but yes, so they said uh, there was a, the unpredictability was gone from the show. And when, they, when we were over on 57th Street, you never knew what was going to happen. Of course, an example was cited of, of Opie going to the window and pouring mustard on a guy who worked in the building. Basically, one day, E-Rock, you found this guy, right? Yeah, um, I had to run over to do the Dwayne Reed across the street, and there was this guy bragging that he was going on Letterman because yeah. he makes toothpick sculptures. And he had these portraits that were literally celebrities or whoever they were, and it was a full facial portrait, and it was on a black card made of toothpicks. Yeah, he had that, and he also had, um, uh, I think he had a stat, like Statue of Liberty or Empire State Building with oh, him. Oh, right, well. a full, a full sculpture of yeah. it. Yeah. So, uh, so E Rock, doing what he did, does for the show, said, Hey, why don't you come up and be on a radio show? So he brought this guy up. Uh, we had no idea what to do with him. We ended up talking to him for, I mean, how long did we actually talk to him um, for? Um, just about an hour. Yeah, that's what I thought. And because we were trying to figure out a way to get the sculptures so we could break them, eventually we just had him leave the studio because we we were done with it. At one point, we walked out of the room completely. Ralphie May was in studio that day. He didn't quite get what was going on, so we just left Ralphie May in there with him. Well, that was the second time. Because what do you first, mean the second time? The first time, Anthony was tired of all this boring bullshit and just grabbed his uh, his portfolio and ran out, uh, into Poe's office with it, with the guy chasing him. I love what's going on in here. Mars is working on the phones. Is there anything really wrong or just a typical thing? Just a typical thing. We're good. All right. Um, so the guy ends up leaving. Uh, we Opie is obsessed with doing something to his artwork. Yes. So he tries to pour mustard. Is that kind of where we're picking up this clip? Well, the, yeah, the guy had, uh, after Anthony had uh, stolen his portfolio, the guy had left. He was really upset, and Ope just had the idea of he's going to take Jimmy's mustard and then run to the windows yeah. and try to spray him with mustard from the fifth floor. I will never forget. I was on the sidewalk when this happened because I wanted to see it actually go down. I ran down the stairs to beat this guy down the elevator. It was a moment I'll never forget, and you will all be able to remember it with me right now. Here it is, uh, Opie pouring the mustard out the window. We talked about it earlier today on the show. It'll replay at 3 o'clock if you didn't catch the discussion uh, earlier this morning. But here it is on After Opie and Anthony Live. After o and it's live. Oh, he's gone. That's good. He didn't say goodbye. How fucking rude. Oh, 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 no. Wait, Opie. Where are you going, Opie? Opie, no. Oh, no. He's trying to get him through the window as he comes out. <laughs> He's got to come out the door. And one of these windows are over the door. <laughs> mustard bomb. <laughs> oh, just don't, tell Opie not to drop the whole mustard thing, though. Don't fucking hit the guy with it. Oh, the, no. Guy. Oh, no. Man, it's like every time I come on your show. Bump from Letterman's bad enough. Someone just apologize on the sidewalk and line him up. <laughs> Someone go down and apologize. Somebody's doing it. Tell him to take the gay police thing off so we don't have a hate crime on our hands. 
Oh, he never said he was gay. He never even He never, never had no, to. No, did we he? did. I mean, he's San Francisco, 40, never been married. Toothpick art. Oh my god. I'm too I don't sh- see him yet. I swear I thought he would have uh I got I I get his thought picture. I was gonna get away from Ask him. for a picture. I'm yeah. too soft for this. We get paid for this? Crap. This is brutal today. <laughs> oh, there's this- an old guy. I'll, I'm gonna practice. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. Oh, Dude, there's an old guy in a, a tricycle uh, no. uh like like uh like a little thing rascal that helps him walk. What is it called? No, Walker. Yeah. no. I'm like the hole. Oh, guys. Now. Oh, is that brutal? Oh, my God. Bye-bye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what did, you, did you get them? They'll probably just think they got shit on by a bird that just had a ham and Swiss <laughs> with mustard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Throw some Dwayne Reed milk on him. Is that him right there? Oh my god, is that I gotta apologize to the listeners that had to sit through all that that fucking toothpick bullshit. All of us were just trying to work up enough nerve to do something to him. But it was getting to the point where we're like, alright, we gotta do something to him. What? Hide the mustard. Oh no. Who was taking a picture with him? No one saw anything. Who went to take a picture with him? I think I got the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> the wrong. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, it's just mustard from the sky. That's good. That you, uh, it's funny you hide the mustard, and meanwhile you're telling two countries. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> smooth. <laughs> Everyone, keep it under your hats, eh? Oh, my God. I, I'm weird with this stuff now. I understand how this works. What? I want you to do it. Yes. But I don't want to watch it being And I gone. want no responsibility. And I want no responsibility. <laughs> what happened, Sam? He's on his way back up, but I ran ahead to make sure you knew that there's a very upset random Asian man outside <laughs> with mustard on him. <laughs> Oh no! Are you kidding? That looks really <laughs> sad, Sam. <laughs> Why? How bad did the Asian guy get it? <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I don't know if, if mustard stains sweaters and nice oh, yeah, work well. clothes. <laughs> I hope he doesn't have an interview or something to go through. Oh, if he is, I hope it's with Nathan's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <okay>. <laughs> 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 Danny, what happened? Oh, Danny's here, back up from, Danny. up from downstairs. <laughs> what happened with Asian man? He just appeared out of nowhere, walking down the block. Someone is saying, "Why is How? the Asian guy upset? He's already yellow." <laughs> <laughs> Dave C from New York <laughs> City. That's <laughs> terrible. Oh, guys. After Boyne Live. That was one of the cringiest moments that I've ever been a part of. It's after Opie and Anthony Live. Sam Roberts here. Uh, all the guys, not not all the guys, Opie and Anthony are gone. Jim is headed out to San Francisco this weekend. Uh, his new CD, Despicable, is out, though. Uh, but the rest of us are here. Troy uh, Troy Kwan just walked in. First of all, you have been with the show for about a year. You're lucky that you didn't have to be the one who had to avoid eye contact with an Asian man on the street as mustard <laughs> came down from the sky and hit him in the shoulder. Yeah. Sounds, it's, it's fucking, it sounds ridiculous, dude. Yeah, it was insane. What I was uh, bringing you uh, when you were you know, doing your thing in the hallway, are you really DJing Roland's Pizza Party today? Yeah, I'm getting set up right now. I'm ready to do it. I mean, you have equipment and everything? Yeah, I'm bringing the thunder. Do you think it makes any sense to do that in that little office? It's going to be a good time. I'm going to keep people moving, just just create the good vibe, you know? And what's the guest list like right now? Uh, you know, I haven't taken, uh, seen the guest list lately, yeah. but uh, it's getting... Pretty large. It's growing, isn't yeah. it? That's what I thought. Well, we'll get back to the pizza party in a minute, but uh, we wanted to play a little more of Toothpick Man because that was pretty much just the Asian guy in the mustard. Just to get a little taste, Toothpick Man uh, went back up to the studio for whatever reason. We were able to convince him to come back. And E-Rock, this time we did get that cringe moment, yes? Yes, this is uh, for all the old, old uh, XM fans. You may remember the poker chips. Yes, here it is. Uh, 
Toothpick Man meets the poker chips on After Opie and Anthony Live. After Opie Live. You had an interesting We're up. day here. Yeah. Interesting day. What's going on? Well, we're kind of done with you. If we're you, done? How is the... Uh, we're we're kind of done with you. Well, like, you're uh, done. Yeah, yeah we're, oh, we're yeah, like yeah, wrapping yeah. up, I okay. guess. No problem. But, uh, but uh, absolutely, thanks for coming down. Hey, thank you You've very much good, for having me. been a good good sport, as it. they say. Good I try sport. to be a good sport. Another plug for the website. T-W-O-P-I-C-K. Still sitting. Well, I'm just trying to get Someone's going to get fired. Um, would that be Sam? Get this one trick pony out of here, Sam, please. All right. I'm only trying to get my Ralphie. Plug, yeah. Okay. You're Thanks, out. guys. You're out, Ralphie. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh, there. Oh, I. <laughs> Take care. Take it care. Take it easy. Oh, what's uh, what's your name again? Jimmy, did he. F- is, uh, is that yours? Did you leave something behind the mic there? Oh, no. No. Oh, you mean the toothpick? Please. No, no, there's something. Oh. Please. An ID or something? Fall on the floor. No. Oh! <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. Yeah, exactly. Get out. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, I didn't see the the poker chips coming. I'm so... Holy shit. Okay, look, I got to go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, dude. I, I, to that. I didn't see that. I'm not looking, so I can't even see... I'm looking at my sunglasses I, on the I, table. I, my eyes are shut and covered with my hands. <laughs> oh. Just because I feel the urge to open them. <laughs> oh my god. That was. The guy's just making toothpick art. He just wants to be left alone and not die with broth He's in his hands. I can't. <laughs> Get reported, Anthony. Come on. Can, no, no. I'm so done with like this show. <laughs> we go home now. Oh. After ONA Live. It's after OB and Anthony Live. Sam Roberts, and I mean, to me, there's not a lot cringier than hearing the poker chips slam and then hearing that guy go, oh, man. I mean, (laughs) can you imagine the humiliation of just trying to show your artwork and getting an entire poker set slammed at you? That's the beauty of this show, though. Well, also, an update on that is that he got bumped from doing Letterman. He never did Letterman. Nope. Where's what's Gabe doing out there? Troy, could you grab Gabe for a second? The Rada Fez intern? I wanna Gabe? Yeah. yeah, let's see what Gabe's coming in here from Rod and Fez. Just any of them, they're all on. Oh. So did you you were listening a little to Opie and Anthony back in the day. Uh yeah, I was. Did you ever hear when the toothpick man was on and got poker chips thrown at him? Uh I remember Star Wars guy. I don't remember Toothpick Man. This is why after Opie and Anthony Live is so great. I highly recommend checking that bit out because Troy just heard it. I mean, is there anything cringier than hearing that guy get I, 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 a full poker chip set thrown at him? I missed it. I was actually out in the hallway. What are you, busy working? Yeah, sorry, dude. Oh, Jesus Christ. Erock, I can't work with any of these people. Nope. Well, Erock, uh, yesterday we celebrated uh, a day in the history of Opie and Anthony when we went over... The last, the, the blowing up of K-Rock, the last K-Rock appearance. Not just a day for the history of Opie and Anthony, but yeah. a day for the history of radio as we know it, because nobody ended their reign on uh, any kind of medium the way we did it at K-Rock. And that was almost the nail in the coffin of terrestrial radio, really. I mean, that was the last sort of hurrah. Now you got, you know, Nick Cannon on 92.3 now. You could take that for what it's worth. Um, but E-Rock, every day it feels like... There's a, a celebration. There's something that happened in history of the Opie and Anthony show, and today is no different because, ladies and gentlemen, listening to After Opie and Anthony Live at Home, today is the day. Two years ago on this very day, Stephen Adler was approached, met, and greeted by one of his biggest fans in the world, Former Ron and Fez producer, Eastside Dave. Now, if you haven't heard this before, you're in for a treat. And if you have heard it before, you know you you miss hearing it every day because Eastside Dave is a very passionate person. He used to be a producer on Ron and Fez. He now co-hosts with me on Special Delivery on the weekends. But he is the biggest Guns N' Roses fan in the world. And he has the mentality of a child in some ways where he just gets these bursts of joy that he can't contend with, uh, as was the case when he met Steven Adler. We got some pizza party stuff to go to, but we will play this, and I believe hear from Eastside Dave afterwards, but this is it. 
Eastside Dave meeting Stephen Adler right here on After Opie and Anthony Live. After Opie Live. Stephen, you know? um, trust me, you're safe. Mm-hmm. I, I preface this by saying that. Thank Nothing you. will happen to you whatsoever. But uh, we do work with one of the, no, probably the biggest Guns N' Roses fan ever. And when he met, uh, who was it, Duff McKagan for the first Duff time? Was in, yeah. He, what did he end up doing? Sticking a banana up his ass to show his yeah. appreciation? <laughs> I mean, th- this guy is yeah. but hard it was Allen. core. Uh, hardcore uh, fan. I'll set up for a big hug. He doesn't need the banana. Are we, uh, <laughs> is Eastside Dave coming in to say hi to Steven Adler? Yeah. All right. Chip, you might want to protect your buddy here. No, <laughs> nothing's going to happen. No, okay, good. Dave, but this Dave, guy Dave is, is just very... Come on in, Dave. Look, look. He's got his, <laughs> like he's uh, he's got a guitar. Oh. He's got his guitar oh, hero know guitar. Dave. How do you yeah. know Dave? Yeah. You know Dave? How do you know Dave? Yeah. From yesterday. Uh, <laughs> 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 I know Dave from yesterday. <laughs> from yesterday. <laughs> What's this yesterday? Did you talk to him yesterday? Uh, this, oh. Did, yeah. uh, David, what do you want to say to Stephen? I just want to say he's my favorite drummer of all time. For real. This is real. No me. Look, you can't talk. Calm down. Calm down. I know, but I'm, I'm a drummer, and I get a little bit excited. Um, I play the drums just because of Steven Adler, and I, I'm not just joking around. That's why I became a GNR fan, Mr. Brownstone. You know, uh, my Michelle, all these songs. I could sing a, f- I could sing a little bit if you want. Yeah, sure. I think you know, Stephen would appreciate it because I don't think he's heard the, these songs the, in a the while. Thing, <laughs> I know you're always looking for lead singers, and I can do whatever you want. Yeah, why don't you put the guitar down? You need a little room for this, uh, Stephen. You might want to sit down and, okay. and enjoy this. Let's do a little Mr. Brownstone. Mr. What, Brownstone. What, this is what Stephen to me represents because he plays the shit out of the drums on this opening song. You want to hear a little of the song? Yeah. You want headphones or you don't need them? Opie, there, I'm a fucking pro, just all like Stephen is. All right, why don't we start the song? And then and afterwards, we're gonna have some hot dogs or something. Yeah, know, this is dogs. pizza from Ray. This is for you, Stephen Adler. All right, this is real. Here we go, a little Brownstone. Come on, Stephen. David's dancing. I got the snake dance. Yeah, good. Now this is what we do. I'm from New Jersey. You're from California. We both had hard lives growing up. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> You like it? I love it. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Now I get you. up around seven. Get out bed around nine. I don't worry about nothing, no, because words are waste of my fucking time. Yeah. yeah. All right. Welcome, serious sex, Steve and Adler, yeah. baby. <laughs> Show you your thoughts around seven. We go on stage around nine. Yeah, the boss of man, I don't sit for the drink and feel it fine. Woo! We've been dancing with Mr. Brownstone. He's been talking. He won't leave me alone. No, no, no. He won't leave me alone. No, no, no. I do a little but I little wouldn't do it so a little got more and more. I just keep trying to get a little better and a little better than before. I used to do a little but a little wouldn't do it so a little got more and more. I just keep trying to get a little better than before. Mr. Brownstone, please be back He won't leave me alone. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You're my favorite. I love you. Too. I love you so God, much. Yeah. 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 Will you sign my guitar, right? That's number yeah. three. Oh my God! Goddamn, uh, Dave! Jumping in a circle. <laughs> Dave. Dave. Uh, yeah. He's. <laughs> you missed it. Stephen Adler really He's got into everything it. Everything to me. Start He's jumping around in a circle when he's like Dave singing along. Nice. I know that nice. isn't even any bullshit. Nice. Uh, yeah. Everyone knows that about yeah. you. Listen, let's get, let's talk for some brass tacks. Matt Sorum's a big fat pussy, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, let's fucking not bullshit around. Do, do you think? And I love Matt Sorum. I do too. You know, but. His drumming was a little bit lazy on Use Your Illusions. Didn't have the razzle dazzle, you know that. Razzle dazzle. Matt Sorum is a great drumming machine. 
He's not. He doesn't play. He has. He's not full of feel. He's missing the Stephen Adler yeah, soul. He doesn't have the feel, the heart, and the soul. But he's a great drummer. He's missing Stephen Adler spirit. <laughs> fucked up news illusion, but it's you not are his so fault. out of I shape. They're both. <laughs> Stephen's trying to get his foot. Uh, Dave is so <laughs> out of shape. <laughs> You're a mess. I know. I was wearing my lucky shirt for Stephen <laughs> too, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's my lucky shirt. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jesus. Stephen, <laughs> let's also talk about shitty um, drummers. Uh, the guys from. Bon Jovi, he's not he's very good. Great. Is your favorite? Joe is fucking awesome. Okay, what about Keith Moon? Was he your favorite okay, drummer? No, no, Roger Meadows Taylor's my favorite drummer. Okay. From Queen. Oh, really? Yeah. You get the, the high voice, the singing, really? is that what you like? Every, no, I love his playing and the singing. I could sing backup for you guys, no? Could yes. you? Uh, no, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> nice but no, though. if you want to come to the show, and you can. Go I ahead. will be. So, uh, when's the show? Yeah. Tonight? Tonight. Tomorrow, every shit, next every day for the next two weeks, we're playing somewhere. Can I come on Thursday uh, on yeah, Saturday? Long Island Friday. All right. Listen, seems like well, this is petering out. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for signing my guitar. Thank and you, you are actually one of my you. fucking heroes of all time. That's thank no you. bullshit. You really love... start playing drums because of him? Yeah. Wow, honestly. that's awesome. Um, I was Too in the band. play any, anything like him, but you know. No, OB. <laughs> oh, man, I don't even know what I'm doing. Let's go together. No, that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm doing. <laughs> what I'm doing. <laughs> hey, what's wrong? He wasn't following what I was doing. <laughs> what were you no trying face. to tell? What were you trying to tell? All right, there's his side, Dave. That's it. <laughs> not following what I'm doing. Okay. Hey. Wake up to the jungle. We got for the game. Go to <laughs> I forget the words. I forget the words. I, forget the words. I need, I need a background. Such an idiot. Yeah, that Listen, was great. You're a stalker. Uh, I need a background <laughs> song. And, and thank you for not you know, shoving bananas up your ass. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm retired. Thank you. I know. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, not doing that anymore. He's a retired stunt guy. Thank God. Oh Chip's like, what the God. fuck? I know, Chip. It's part of the gig. I understand. Yeah, right. <laughs> How you doing, prop. Dave? Yeah. What's the matter, Dave? Uh, yeah, I, I can't come. believe I'm here with Steven. Are you going to cry? Oh, Steven? Uh -huh. He does get a little Steven. emotional. Oh, thanks, man. Dave? You alright? No. Why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look at Why? Look at he's busting up a little bit. What's going on? Eastside, what's going on in your head? Talk. What's going on in your head? What's wrong? I can't Is believe I'm here with Steven. Oh. I met Duff. Yeah. Now I've met Steven. I, I've now met the original GNR rhythm section. Yeah. That's better than any rhythm section in the history of rock and roll. That's right, Charlie Watts, you thin fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and Bill Wyman was a fucking pedophile. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you weren't, Stephen. No, That's one of my favorite things about you. I Wikipedia you last night. You were never arrested for pedophilia. <laughs> I, I gotta go. I love you. <laughs> we're on the first noon of three. Thank you, Stephen. Thank, Thank you, you Open Eight. Thank you for letting me meet on my side, Dave. Meeting Stephen. Bye, Dave. By the way, that's real, Chip. We're, that's not some silly oh, I know radio. That. I know guy's the real deal. Yeah, he he's the real McCoy. He loves Guns N' Roses. I know that. Just, I can tell that. Look, he's, he's crying, if you don't believe me. Aww. He didn't want to cry on mic. Yeah. He's yeah. Sweet. I love he's that. He's a maniac. All right, Dave. Do you need a hug, Dave? You want, Thanks, you want Steven Adler to hug you a little bit? A little goodbye <laughs> yeah. hug? All right. A little hug to comfort. I'm sorry. I got some on your shirt. No. <laughs> 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 Plenty of other shit on that shirt. Thank you, Stephen. You Thank know, you. That was great. Man. Yeah, I don't, that's fantastic. I don't, Davis, crazy uh, motherfuckers, you know. And <laughs> that's coming from you. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> I, I thought I've experienced pretty much almost everything. Yeah, that's that's up there, right? That is in there. It ain't gonna get any better than that. So no, we that's should. That's love. We should thank these guys for coming yeah, by. Absolutely. Yes. After Opie Live. After Opie and Anthony Live, I'm Sam Roberts. All the boys are still here. I mean, Opie and Anthony and, well, Jim wasn't here today at all. Opie and Anthony are gone, but I'm still here with my pals, E-Rock and Travis Troy, Derek, and Gabe. Gabe, the Ron Fez intern, when this bit was on, the wall in this studio literally started coming down. Yeah, it was Would, actually a really sad sight. Well, it's not a sad... You're supposed to be setting up the studio, aren't you? That's right. So how are you going to let the wall fall down? I'm going to have to give it a good talking to. You're going to talk to a wall? Fix the wall. <laughs> right on, Sam. I will do that. Let's see it. I'm going to, you know, you should be fixing the wall while I'm doing this. Because at the same time, we just heard it. Eastside Dave meeting uh, Stephen Adler, his idol from Guns N' Roses. 
Ladies and gentlemen, on the phones with us right now here on After Opie and Anthony Live, the I'm great. Be on the show soon. Come no, on. you're Dave. Come on. Tell the kids to shut the fuck up. Tell Dave, dude. Up. Dave, Dave, Dave. Tell Eastside. The fucking kids to shut. Hello. Eastside, Dave. You're on the show now. You're already. Hey, Sammy. Hey, What's Dave. Up? How's it going, buddy? Oh, Sam. You know that brings back memories. The, uh, you, know? you, you were listening to when you met Steven Adler. Tell me this, Dave. Were you really crying? Because it sounded towards the end like you were getting some maybe tears and mucus on his shirt. Yeah. Um, well, I started to try and force some tears because I felt like he deserved it. <laughs> and, and then what happens is, like a true method actor, I then start, I actually started to get emotional. And after, he did sign my guitar, too, my Guitar Hero guitar. Yeah, yeah, let's not say guitar, because it doesn't actually play music. It's a plastic guitar, okay, you're right. <laughs> okay. Um, and the guy couldn't have been nicer. That was one of the greatest celebrity meetings of my entire life, well, I have to say. Not only did he sign your guitar and was he nice to you, but you grabbed Steven Adler by the hands... That's and right. the, the two of you jumped in circles together while playing Mr. Brownstone. I know. I one time went up as an 11-year-old kid to, to say hi to Whitney Houston at FAO Schwartz. And she got all these big thug bodyguards to basically push me in the face. And here I am what? dancing with... Well, what, I'm, what I'm saying is here I am dancing with an A-lister and Steven Adler. Yeah. It couldn't have been more of a gentleman. That's the way you rock. Not like this fucking Whitney Houston, Samuel. Are you worried when you're meeting idols, like your Guns N' Roses guys, that they're not going to be these people that you put on the pedestals that you do? Like, that they are going to be dicks? Absolutely, because um, when I met Duff on the Open Anthony show, <laughs> yeah. um, he definitely thought there's going to be a problem, and I could see his fists were clenched the entire uh, yeah, that's, interview. He didn't quite, and then Slash didn't even want you near him. No, I mean, I was, why? Because, uh, what, I was wearing a, 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 I cut the sleeves off a G&R shirt and was wearing a Dr. Seuss, you know, hat, <laughs> thinking that I was, I was dressed in a Slash costume. I don't know why, you know, you would want to meet that type of shit. Well, did you end up taking your clothes off when you met Stephen Adler? Uh, I did. Well, here's the thing that you didn't hear in that interview. Yeah. Was... When I started to dance, see, I always had a problem. At, I always went to the, I had to go to the bathroom right around 10.30 or so. Sure. Um, I mean, the, yeah. 15. Yeah. That oh, was so, like, that so was right around, routine. right around right now, you're, you're feeling bathroom time. I just went. Oh, I just went on the fantastic. phone. I was listening to that segment. Fantastic. And, um, and while yeah, people I. People react I, that way a lot. Yeah, and while I danced, well, they sh and they should, but <laughs> while I was dancing with Steven Adler, uh, this is an exclusive just for you, for the, what, what is this thing called? After Opie and Anthony Live. I know, it, it'll, 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 people will remember it eventually. Okay. <laughs> um, what, uh, here's an exclusive for you, Samuel. Okay. Uh, uh, a little bit, just a little bit. I'm not going to fucking make it out like a big thing, like, oh, we, you know, but a little trickle of, you know. Excrement came down my my right. Uh, oh, dang. that's disgusting. That is, that's next. That's an exclusive right for you. Now I didn't uh, say anything to Stephen Adler because I still wanted to get close to him. And yeah, maybe, uh, and you probably smelled. I, yeah, and what, also what I planned to do was I, I wanted to go out drinking with these fucking guys. You know, maybe <laughs> get drinking, get some drugs. You know, beat fucking Doctor Drew up. He obviously didn't help out that Allison Chains guy that much, so, no. you know, call him a fraud and just, to, you know, have some drinks with Steven Adler. But you're one of the few people, Eastside Dave, who, after Steven Adler met you, yeah. he said, that was fucking crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> Steven Adler has lived the life that he has, and five minutes with Eastside Dave, he, that was fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> what just I, happened? I, I, I don't understand that. <laughs> you're telling me fucking Axel is more sane than that? I don't know. I, mean, uh, I don't know. But Dave, uh, you used to work here with Ron and Fez. You still work here, of course, with me on uh, Saturday nights for special delivery. I work here, I, and I also work with you on the After o &A show. <laughs> yes, you're, you're the new... Friday, 10 to 11. From now on, I'm the new phone-in third mic. Well, what are you doing on uh, on the... Plug your... Plug whatever you got to plug. Plug? I, this is this is actually a plug. Do you think this show is plug-worthy? Well, I think so. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool right? Um, Whatever, Sam. Fucking special delivery 9 tomorrow night. Live, there's a fucking cowbell. Plug that shit. I don't know. Plug whatever you want. You well, know? I thought you were going to plug your stuff that you don't do with Sirius XM. Oh, okay, yes. 
uh, <laughs> Baby Max Sports Program, available on the old, uh, just it's available on iTunes or Stitcher. I don't know, just fucking follow me on the Twitter, whatever. You'll see. Yeah, yeah, twitter.com slash Eastside Dave. You'll get all the information. Dave, thank you for calling in. Thank you, Samuel. Bye, buddy. Good night. The great Eastside Dave. Now, the gone. Roland. Roland just walked into the studio. Don't make comments like that. This is not. A, this is not an ugly show like that. But Roland is here. He just walked in. Like you look exhausted. Are you pizza party planning? Yes, I am. <laughs> shit has to be done. I guess. So. And by shit, you mean shit. Correct. That too. Correct. Um, we were talking about Roland's big pizza party all day today. I went. Uh, talking to some people around here. I talked to some of the people who work at Sirius XM, including Roland management and asked them what they thought about the pizza party. So here's uh here's some of the people from Sirius XM. So what have you guys heard about this pizza party? I've heard there's going to be a bubble machine. Danny, are you you got invited, right? Of course. What does anybody know why Roland's doing this? Yes, I do. Why? Um I do believe Roland suggested to our management <laughs> That we have a pizza party because something good happened, right? Car crash? Oh, Car Crash Comedy went so well that uh, Roland felt that we deserved a pizza party. So he asked Gary, one of our management team, and uh, kind of just didn't get an answer on that. So Roland decided to throw his own. <laughs> so he just could take money out of his pocket and throw a pizza party. Yeah, he's done that before. I mean, there was a time Roland, we, we just kind of jokingly said, hey, Roland, buy us lunch. And he went and spent like $200 on Wendy's. <laughs> Mikey Piff from Hits 1. I heard you know about the pizza party. I I got a personal invite. I was really excited. I still don't know what it's for. What is going on? I all I know is that there was a, an email uh, circulated. Um, not quite sure how large the listing was. Who sent you the email? R- Roland. What have you heard is going to be at the pizza party? Um, pizza. Um, uh, I've heard rumors of, of balloons and. Um, uh, a man in, in, a, in a bear costume singing some sort of tunes. Oh, and age Troy Kwan. I know you're ready. Are you? You're going to the pizza party, right? I'm not only going to be there. I'm DJing the event. What? <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, Roland asked me to come in, play some music, keep the keep the party moving, keep the people out on the dance floor. Where is the party taking place? I believe it's in his office over there. So. That's the size of a college dorm room, maybe yeah, slightly it's small. It's, it's just like a little house party. We're going to keep the party moving. You're DJing the party? Yes. Yes, I'll be DJing the party and uh, just having a good time, you know? Steve Storniolo from the Comedy Channel's Funny in the Morning. What do you know about Roland's uh, pizza party? you right outside the office from him. I hear Roland talking about food 24-7. You know about the pizza party. You, uh, you, you were invited, right? No, I wasn't. I just was going to say I always hear Roland and Eric talking about food. Always. But so you, I, didn't, you don't know anything about the pizza party? Or? I've heard them talk about pizza countless times. You didn't get an invite? I didn't, I didn't know there was a party. No, I did not get an invite. Oh, all right. Sorry. Can I come? I don't do the invites. <laughs> uh, Rob Cross, what's management's view on Roland's pizza party? Uh, is, uh, I think stoked is, is the official management position on the pizza party. Stoked. What if something goes wrong? Unstoked. Is this going what to? Go, what could go wrong? There's a bubble machine, and he's going to try to pack dozens of guests into his office. Oh yeah, maybe we shouldn't have this. <laughs> <laughs> we, maybe we should run it by legal. It's after Opie and Anthony live. Roland, this is the story of the century. I mean, for whatever reason, you decided to throw the greatest pizza party of all time. And then uh, while this, while those clips were playing, it wasn't very long. Two major things happened, which we'll get into both. The first one we'll get into second, but I'll say it first. Somebody, I won't mention his name in case he doesn't want to get mentioned, no. said that they're trying to book you for a meeting. Oh no! That's going to coincide with the pizza party. Oh no! They they bo- they moved the meeting time that coincides to the pizza party. Is, is there sabotage? I'm not gonna say it. Uh huh. But I smell Apollo landing. Oh wow! This is awful. But in even bigger news, Roland, you walked in here. With a celebrity. I'm assuming you didn't book them for After Opie and Anthony Live. I booked them for the pizza party. My <laughs> this is Kevin Christiana from uh, Project Runway, of course. Yes, such a celebrity. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I saw you on TV. Well, the, guy, good. the guys did announce them this morning. Huh? Oh, lovely. Uh, Opie did say you're coming. Yeah, but he said your friend Kevin, mm-hmm. not the guy from, from Project Runway. Now, <laughs> did you realize when Roland, who books talent for usually shows, uh, was booking you, 
He was actually booking you for a pizza party that he was throwing for no reason. No, I had no idea. I actually thought I was coming on the live Opie and Anthony show. I like told my family and stuff. And, oh, Jesus, Roland. Yeah. What so are you they're doing? all like listening and they're like, now, now I'm back to being shrill again. <laughs> yeah, they're like, yeah, well, we That's thought you were famous for a second. 15 minutes is up. <laughs> but you, you instead kind of tricked him into, cause you needed some kind of. I told the whole of... office, I'm like, dude, I'm coming, I'm gonna plug us. <laughs> <laughs> well, well you could, you could still plug. I mean, it's technically. It's still continuing. Yeah, after Opie and Anthony live is still technically Opie and Anthony just without. Obi or, or Anthony. Or we book him tomorrow to give a play-by-play. We could. What did you want to... Wait, what, uh, technically, wasn't I, like, called Anthony at some point? Yeah, um, during the Jets game, everybody <laughs> wanted to picture it with him because they go, Hey, Anthony. I thought he was Anthony? Yeah. Right, Why? Here's, oh, here's, what, because Opie was there? Yeah. And- here's another shrill moment of being a, a reality star after, season, after three seasons. Um Somebody stops me, and Anth- and Opie moves to the side at the Jets game, and they're yeah. like, oh, my God, can I take a picture with you? And I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever, it happens, you know? Sure. And uh, Opie's like, cool, man. He's like, you know, so I take the picture. He's like, I love your guy's show. He's like, oh, are you Jesus. fucking kidding me? He's like, they think you're Anthony. And I'm like, yeah. oh, this is just that's fucking embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, that's awful. But now you're being tricked into just getting booked for... I mean, this is a club appearance, except <laughs> it's in somebody's office for one hour. Roland, That's right. Pizza's good, though. What's the motivation? Like, seriously. Like, this is weird, crazy, <laughs> maniacal behavior. It's not, though. It is. It's insane. You're not in a management position. You're not... You're just taking money out of your own pocket and throwing a grandiose pizza party for no reason. I've done that many times before. Why? Because I see people morale down. Yeah. I th- I'm going to cheer people up. You're going to be the morale is that, booster. Is that a sin? No, Roland, it's not. I mean... Oh, God. Now, <laughs> is there anybody who... It seems like this guest list is getting out of control, though. Because, like, I talk, the only person that I talked to here was Steve Sterniolo, who works on the comedy channels for Funny in the Morning. No, that's that Shapiro. No, Sterniolo was not invited. I don't know who he is, but I like um, Shapiro. I guess he's another guy who works on the Comedy Channel. Is there any worry that you're going to break fire code restrictions? I don't think so. I mean, Rob Cross, when I talked to him, he was kind of laughing it off when he said maybe we should talk to legal. But he did seem alarmed when I brought up the idea that this was all going to go on in your office and there were going to be lots of people in there. That is true. <laughs> Do you have the pizza yet? Uh, no, it comes at noon. We're about an hour and ten minutes out right now. Um, I did get the cake, though. Is the bubble machine here? Um, it is in uh, the Nagel Mobile. Nagel, when is the bubble machine coming out? Are you still here? There you are. Yeah, as soon as we're done with this, uh, we've got the bubble machine, the oh. cookie platter, and a few other things. Who else is in there with you, coughing? Um, we have Pepper and Zito from the Ron and Fez show, and Pepper wants to know where the fuck is their pizza. Well, tell Pepper um, to come in here. Yeah, tell, um, tell him that Zito, it's his responsibility to throw a party. People love I here. stepped up for our show. Zito needs to step up for his show. Pepper, you didn't get invited to the pizza party? I didn't get an invite, no. But, what you know, the? our show's online during that time, so, you know, whatever. So it's just an asshole move either way. Roland, are the Ron and Fez guys invited? Um, Zito should throw a party for them. I'm just saying that, because I throw a party oh, for Oh, there's us. Mark Zito. You're saying, uh, Roland is saying that it's your job to throw a party for Ron and Fez. Yeah, just, just fuck E-Rock. He specifically asked us if we wanted to talk about this, and I, I said no. Shit. And I said no, I don't want to talk about this pizza party. And then he brought it up Why anyway. Why don't you want to talk about the pizza party? Because um, he doesn't have the cojones like I do, saying, do you know what? I'm doing it myself. What's up, P. Hickety? Well, as was said on the Ron and Fez show yesterday, it's an open invite to have the party in studio here with us. I mean, if, if, you know, yeah, guys, why don't that... we move the party? But then it becomes a whole other issue. Because What's the other what issue? issue? Come on, there's more... more space, more people. And you got you got a celebrity here. I'm sure Ron would want to do <laughs> you know Ron Bennington interviews, right? If Ron interviews Kevin, then it's a different story. There, I just threw the gauntlet. Oh, in. my God. See, now, 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 I'm now I'm seeing you working. Now I'm seeing you actually working. Down. That's good. That's well, good. If you guys want pizza. <laughs> And invite cake and other goodies and actually be talked about. You have to interview Kevin. Well, we have a celebrity name. We have a gauntlet thrown down. I can't wait now for this. Now the ball is in Mr. Bennington's court, who I respect and love, and Mr. Fess. I can't wait for this pizza party to begin. And then if he does an interview Kevin. Rolling, you just keep going. I'm I trying to wind down. I'm doing my impression <laughs> of Dave. Isn't that annoying? Don't say that about Dave. I don't agree with you He's there. He's an asshole. Don't. I mean, this is not <laughs> your venue for that. I'm sorry. Ron is coming in, but we're trying to give him his time. Uh... Ron, we're wrapping up. We're trying to give you your time. Crossover time. Crossover <laughs> it time. is. 
Hey, stay tuned for Pop Tarts Thursdays on the Ron and Fez Show. <laughs> when you hear the Pop Tarts sounder, dial one eight hundred Pop Tart. Ron and Fez is coming up next. Thank you for listening to After Opie and Anthony Live. <laughs> the Opie and Anthony Show is now 